Hey guys, this is the 2020 Audi R8 Performance Decennium. They only built 222 of these worldwide and only 50 are in the US. And I am partnering with Omaze to give one of these away in a sweepstakes. You can take it home fully tax-free, delivered to your door with 20K in the trunk. The proceeds from this sweepstakes benefit a cause called DoSomething.org, which turns online activism into real-world activism. And you can sign up with any number of causes that you want to support, and it'll tell you how to make real-world change. It's a great cause. So hit the link in the description and find out how you can enter and take this very R8 home with you. Now enjoy this video. What up everybody? You all seem to like uh, our tech video with that crazy mini I drove, so I got another one for you. I'd like to introduce you to Chuck Moreland. Hello buddy. How's it going Matt? The CEO of Vonin, who have designed and built something incredibly cool. This is a 2013 Porsche 911 Carrera. Chuck, what's a Vonin and what do you do? What have you done here? So what we've done is create a retrofitable hybrid system for these Porsche cars. And basically it's a performance hybrid. So we're actually able to deliver an additional 150 horsepower on top of what the engine is producing on its own. And it's there to make the cars go super fast, uh, not unlike the Porsche 918 Spiders, which are also a hybrid. So aftermarket hybrid is what we're talking about here. Right. right. Hybridization of a car that wasn't designed to be a hybrid from the factory and we're able to deliver that hybrid supercar type performance. That sounds ridiculously complicated, is it? Well, it's taken us three and a half years to get this far with it, and we've been working on it awful hard. So uh, it, it's, it was pretty complicated, yes. Okay, take me through the system on the car. Show me, show me everything. Okay, so the core of it is a motor which is fit. It's a very short motor, which you can't see, of course, because we're looking at the outside of the car. See the controller, which is on top of the rear deck lid. Right, so that's a motor controller. It's an AC motor, so this is the power electronics that convert the DC to AC and put the motor into a generator mode versus a torque mode to propel the car. The motor itself is a very short motor. It's only two and three quarters inches long, and it fits inside the bell housing of the transaxle. And what we're actually doing is taking the flywheel out and bolting our motor in place of the flywheel. And do PDK and manual uh, 911s and Caymans and Boxsters use the same flywheel regardless of gearbox? So is it the same for either? Uh, actually, they don't. And what we do is we put a what we call a supplemental flywheel on the front of our motor. And it replicates some of the functionality of the factory flywheel. Uh, which includes that uh, we have the teeth of the crank position sensor. It provides some additional inertial mass to smooth out the pulses of the engine. And in the case of a manual transmission, it provides a place to mount the clutch and the front contact plate for the, the clutch plate. Cool. Uh, the battery and battery cooling system are up in the front. So do you want to show me that? Sure. Show me how that system works. This whole system, you told me, weighs the net 170 pounds. So you have added 200 and change, but also taken out 50 to 70, depending on what we're talking about, right? Right. So we've taken the flywheel out of the car. We've also Pull taken out panels while we've taken it. out the starter motor of the car because our motor takes on the starter motor functions. Your say that again. Your motor takes on the starter motor functions. So Move the 12 volt starter motor, and our motor actually starts the engine. I feel like this is similar to what Audi's done with the RS6 and their mild hybrid 48 volt system where the, the, the start stop system and the starting of the car are the same really. On, on some level that's similar. Uh, this is a 400 volt system so we're generating a lot more power and torque than those mild hybrid systems. Okay so what are we looking at in the front here? So what you see is our battery module and the cooling and some of the power electronics that are related to that. Uh, the battery is the obviously part, this section. Much. Right, the top piece is a cold plate. It's all liquid cooled, and there's serpentine ch coolant channels that where coolant is flowing through that cold plate. The battery modules actually exist below that. There's a t total of 12 of them there. Each one is roughly the size of a motorcycle battery. So, what is the difference between the type of batteries that you're using here 
and the sort of assembled groups of laptop style batteries that we see in something like a Tesla. Right, so the biggest difference is the design objective and what we're trying to do with a car. In the case of a Tesla, they're trying to store a lot of energy so that they can propel the car continuously for 300 plus miles. And we're not trying to do that at all. What we want to do is store bursts of power in the battery and draw it out very rapidly. So, so it's only the acceleration and regen we need and not really the efficiency and range. Right, so the focus of the system is to deliver a power and performance increase. And so we don't use the hybrid system to propel the car on when it's going steady state down the road. We use it to assist the gasoline engine in acceleration and give you large bursts of power uh, when you want to accelerate the car. Very, very cool. So what is 150 horsepower and 150 torque, correct, the crank? That is correct. That's awesome. So this is how much for this package? The system goes $75,000, including parts and installation. And it will go in any Porsche sports car 2009 or up, correct? That is correct. So C2, C4, turbos, GT3s, uh, Boxster, Cayman, any of the platforms. I just drove this base Carrera, which is a 350 horsepower engine uh, from the factory. So 500 the way you've done it here. What is the difference in what I would feel from the driver's seat putting this package on an NA car versus how it would be used with one of the newer turbo cars or a 991 turbo? So um, it actually makes an even more profound difference on these early cars because the newer cars have a fatter torque curve. One of the real benefits of the hybrid system is that you can get full torque at essentially zero RPM, but in our case that means from idle on up. So say you cut 900 RPM on up, we can deliver full torque. These early cars are relatively peaky. Uh, the newer turbo cars uh, have a little bit wider power band, so we can add to that and create an even, even taller torque peak throughout, throughout low RPM and higher RPM. And you mentioned to me before that because this system operates completely independently of the car's ECU, the two systems really don't even know the other one exists, and that makes it more seamless, actually. That's exactly right. So we are monitoring what the ECU is doing. We're actually sitting on the CAN bus and looking at the messages. So we know what the ECU is doing. We know what the driver is asking for in terms of inputs at the brake and at the accelerator. And we're making decisions based on what we hear about how much torque to deliver and when and how much regeneration to do and when. All right, well, that's exceptionally cool. In our next video, I'm going to go take this thing for a drive and see if Chuck here is full of it. So thank you very much, sir. Okay, thanks, Matt. And plug your website one more time. It's vonnen.com, V-O-N-N-E-N. -N -E -N. Before we go, what's Vonnen mean? Vonnen is, uh, it's a mythical Viking ship that was the first one that had both sails and oars. Oh, really? Yeah. A hybrid Viking ship? It's either that or we made it up. Or it's just it a sounded German cool. It word. sounded cool. All right, let's go for a drive.